All right, so for uh, today, uh, we need to sort of plan because we've been learning the pieces of what our project is going to be. We've been learning about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Those are the pieces to help us build our project. And just because we're very versed in the technology doesn't really mean we're going to make a good app. So we need to do a little bit of preliminary planning. Let's say that we've taken these last days to learn all of these technological concepts. But now we'll take a moment to plan our project a bit. So I'm going to uh, bring up a, a drawing tool, and I'm going to draw a few things. Um, you can take notes as well, or I'm going to put these in the network folder at the end of the day. But I'm going to do a little bit of sketching, because we should also plan our project, simply not just start coding it. So what I'm going to do here is uh, wire framing wire framing our app. Basically, I'm going to uh, plan our app. Now, all along, we've been using our example or I've been saying we need to think about our example app. I'm going to pull it up here. Remember, vmcinc.net, my S-D-C-E. That's one we saw on the first day of class. And this is our example project once I look at it here. So this is what we're going toward by the end of this month. And then next month, we will upgrade it with all of these cool mobile features, um, maps and all of that databases and so forth. So based on this, we need to sort of analyze what our project is going to be. Um, I've got basically a... I've got a home screen. So if I draw this, we've got our, our home screen. I'll just mark that as H. There's our home screen. Because that's one of the first things that I see, or the first thing, really. From the home screen, I can then go to other screens of the project, for example, the art screen and the computer's screen. So we're going to connect over to the art screen and the computer's screen. From the home screen, I can go to the subsequent screens. Can I go to any other screen from the home screen? You might see the About screen. You can click on that, and that'll go to another screen about this is art. So here I'm getting like a big overview of what my project will be. Uh, this bit of planning is obviously very useful at the preliminary stage of any project, be it an app or a website or anything like that, to lay out everything that we need to do before we get into the code. And it may work out if I just jump into the code and start to write the code and all of that, but if I don't have a plan, it might not really work out as I intended. So a simple planning stage like this is what we'll do for a moment. If we break down the art screen, we have here that we can see uh, art 101, 102, 103, 104, right? 101, 102, etc. I can see content of those particular screens um, or concepts. They're not big screens in and of themselves, but they're independent content. We have also a calendar, which is also side content there, so we can say there's our calendar. From here we've got a link to the catalog, the school's catalog. This goes out over to a completely different uh, link, so I'm going to put that over here. Um, SDCE. It's out on the internet. I'm just drawing the classic little cloud icon that it's out on the internet. In the computer screen, I have something very similar in that I have COM 101, 102, etc. So I would do the same thing here. 
This is divided into 101, 102, 201, 301. At this point, I might not have everything completely set up or planned. That's the point of this. I figured out, okay, actually I should have one more section here. Or maybe this won't work here, I need to put it over there. So this pre preliminary planning stage is what's uh, valuable, why it's valuable to figure these things out. Over in the About screen, it's got some About content, and here we've got Map and Customize. So I'm going to say here this is Customize, and then map. Customize pops up. It asks me a question. That data then gets used throughout our app, and the map screen has the map feature. And that's breaking down then the whole concept of our app. Not not a completely simple app, not a completely difficult app, but we've laid out all of the pieces of the app, all of the different sections. Our final, uh, our next um, mobile version will have more things. If you have tested out the version up on the App Store, it has the functionality also of um, saving uh, classes uh, saving the students' classes, their class list. So that would also point out over here, class. Well, I'll call it simply like this, the database screen, because that's all going to happen in a database. And that'll have some other functionality and subscreens, editing the database, retrieving data, etc. But here I'm just kind of planning. I don't know what I'm doing there at that point yet. That'll be in the future at perhaps... Um, plan this part a little better, and I'll get to that part eventually. But at least I've got it written down so that I can deal with it, that it's on my mind to get to eventually. Like I said, I'm going to put this graphic later on into the network folder. Any questions on, on this so far? I also have to think about at least a pre preliminary or rudimentary um, design because if we have a screen that we're going to focus on this sort of dimension, we look at the home screen, the art screen, computer screen, they're all consistent in that they have these elements. I'm seeing things over and over. What are some things that I'm seeing on all of the screens. You should see that there's some sort of header. There's a footer. There's a nav, a nav bar. I'm seeing that consistently throughout various screens of our project, at least three different screens. If I go over to computer's screen and look at one of these classes, the screen is different. There is no footer, there is no nav bar, there's simply a back button. So this is a different interface. We've got interface A that we need to think about and design and implement. We have a um, interface B, which simply has a header and a back button. But no footer. And then in the middle, they've all got a content area. <coughs> That's a different interface that we need to create and implement. Are there any other interfaces that you that you recall from this project? The about screen. The about screen is a pop-up screen. It doesn't. It's not attached 
like the other screens where it fills the whole viewport. The About screen is a pop-up screen. It's got a drop shadow or we need to you know, make, make it be different that it pops up. It doesn't have a footer, it doesn't have a nav bar, it has a close button. So this would be uh, Interface C. Maybe just draw it differently. Interface C has a header, it has a close button, it has a contact, uh, content area. Maybe draw a little something here like it shadows on the edge. That it's popping up. If I look at the map screen, that's interface B in that it doesn't have that footer, it doesn't have the nav bar, it has a back button. It says go back, it's a little bit different. But it has a back button, so the map screen would fall under interface B. And then we've got well, we've got this calendar, this side panel. That's a slightly different interface as well. This appears in one part of my app at the moment but this is a different interface. It has no footer, it has no header, but it does have a back button or a close button. So I could say that would be interface D. It has a close button and then some content that's D. And that should be it, but here, if I, if you had no plan at all, if you ne had all of this knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, great. Now you need to develop an idea for an app. Well, before I jump into the code editor, perhaps plan it a bit. And here I'm starting to figure out what I want to do in my app, and hear a little bit about what I want it to look like. This can all, of course, be refined as time goes on, and most likely it will be refined. Maybe I don't want to do a uh, side panel after all. The information that I thought of displaying there should actually be more like interface B, or that it pops up like an interface C. So I can figure this out as time goes on. And this process, this wireframing process, also known as storyboarding, I'm planning. It's a planning stage. This is optional, but highly recommended for any endeavor. Uh, there have been many famous examples of this happening on a napkin. Twitter basically was founded on a napkin. A bunch of people got together, they were having ideas, there was a napkin, give me a napkin, I've got an idea, and they started to write it down. How about some sort of app that you can send short messages to each other and it's all linked together, blah blah blah. Twitter, 10 years later. Uh, you can actually look that up. Uh, it's somewhere in the About screen of Twitter. You can look up the original napkin. They, they kept it um, of where Twitter came from. So planning. The whole point of that is planning. Are you, are you going to jump into coding or are you going to plan a bit? I would recommend a little bit of planning. So this would be okay for us for the moment and then we'll get back to coding and such. But does this make sense? Any, any questions? Any comments on this? I'm going to save this to the network folder in a bit, and uh, I'm going to title it. This is the my SDCE app. And if it's just myself working on it, maybe it's not as a big deal. But if I'm working with a team, definitely. If you know you guys were broken up into teams and someone's in charge of one thing and someone's in charge of another thing, then planning is definitely important because everyone thinks differently, everyone acts differently, everyone does their work differently. So if everyone's on the same page, a little bit of a management, that could be very valuable to have a smooth development process. So if we need to end up with something like this, if we have this example project, we've started to play with the building blocks, which is jQuery Mobile previously. And we started to see that this is just uh, you know plain old HTML code as we've been working with before, and um, we've got all of these data roles and so forth. We're going to get back to that in one moment, but I'm actually remembering something here. I loaded up the project 
on my uh, web uh, on the web browser of my computer. Actually, the first thing that I saw was this uh, desktop version, the full screen version of the project. And I could then go to the mobile site, or if I go to that address directly on a mobile device, it will recognize you're on a mobile device, and it will take you directly to the mobile version. But on the desktop, it recognized that I was on a desktop, and therefore it served me a desktop version. So if I want to be complete in my design here, what I could do is make a note that first there's a preliminary screen, isn't there? Before I get to this mobile friendly version. So all of this is in a folder of mobile friendly and before it there is some other um, starting point, some other index page which detects to send the user to the mobile friendly version or to send the user over to the you know to the desktop version. So that's actually happening beforehand. Someone um, the web version, someone visits from the internet something happens on some screen that detects and then it sends the user then off to the mobile version or the desktop version. That's what I'm seeing here on, on the browser. Here's your mobile friendly version. I mean your desktop version, which is just a dummy graphic. But if I go to it on a mobile device, it, it'll know and pass the user on to where they need to be. So that's something we need to deal with as well. That initial um, detection. It won't matter so much next month when we deal with the mobile app version of, of the project. But at the moment, because we're still kind of dealing with a, with a web project, this is something we'll talk about as well. Um, detection. I'm going to talk about um, AWD and RWD. One is a little bit more commonly known, perhaps. Does anyone know what RWD is? Responsive, Responsive Web Design. Responsive Web Design. Does anyone know what AWD is? Adapt All Wheel Drive. Adaptive Web Design. Okay, so responsive web design is a more en vogue one at the moment, the more popular one, that the one that is most often taught. This is basically one, let's keep it really simple, one HTML file that responds to the user's screen. So grows and shrinks the interface as needed. There's one HTML file, a home.html, for example. And it's coded in such a way, then, that it grows and shrinks. If I visit that HTML file on my mobile device, it'll shrink down to fit into it nicely. The fonts should look nice. It's mobile-friendly. The same code, then, is programmed in a way so that if I go to that HTML file on a desktop with a nice big 21-inch monitor, it grows and shrinks to the size that'll look best on that monitor. This is the newer generation of this concept. The older generation, the first version of this, was adaptive web design in that it's different HTML files are served to the user as needed. There's an HTML file that is specifically designed for mobile people. There's a, there's a there's a 
web file that is specifically designed for desktop people or tablet people. There's a different file for different uh, devices. Both of these have pros and cons, of course. Um, a con of AWD is more files to work with. So if I have a home screen for the mobile version and I change some text, I have to change that text for the desktop version as well. So I have two changes that I need to make on two different files. Um, a pro of this approach is uh, most uh, how can we say it? most um, targeted method, um, most accurate. In that, if we know that we ha are going to have certain users or certain devices accessing a file, we can set that up so that it targets that user exactly. We can have the interface look exactly how they need it to look on their device, on their Android device, on their iPhone device, on their tablet, on their desktop, etc. So we can target it to the, for, the, for the user to have the best user experience. It is more work because I then have to manage more files. Over on RWD, responsive, uh, a con of that is one size fits all doesn't always fit all. We have to think of all the possibilities of all of the users visiting our project and make sure that we program it to cover every contingency in one file. And oftentimes we have a lot, a lot of balls to juggle in one file. A pro is, if done right, less work overall. The big thing here is, if done right, and that can be a complicated thing when you have to deal with so many devices. Uh, Android devices are the largest market share, but Android devices are also uh, fragmented in that there's 4-inch devices, 5-inch, 6-inch. The Samsung interface uh, on the web browser is a little bit different than the Motorola interface and is a little different than the LG interface. They're a little different. iPhone used to be very homogenous, in that uh, an iPhone is an iPhone is an iPhone. But then eventually they started to make larger ones and smaller ones and then iPads and all of that. So there's fragmentation there as well. And do you have one of the uh, new Retina uh, capable iPhones or do you have one of those old ugly ones where, the, where it's only got 300 dpi? I insist on 600 dpi. So even on the iPhone world there is uh, fragmentation. Then if you want to deal of course with the third party candidates of mobile which are Windows Phone, uh, Blackberries, um, what else is there? Um, Teasen devices and all of that. There's a lot to to cover, and you need to do it all at once, at all times, in one code base. So there's pros and cons for both. AWD was the first one, basically, to try to figure this out, uh, and then that's kind of fallen out of favor for RWD. And you pretty much that's what you're you learn in most classes. I believe that's what you're learning in the feud class. Um, I haven't taken the class and looked at the material, but from what I understand, that's what they're covering there. So we're seeing there's both pros and cons. Because eventually our project is going to be a mobile device that can be targeted to all devices. When we talk about Cordova um, next month we will see that we can use that to basically compile our project for all the devices. But what we can do is we can specify and we can target to each device. Uh, we can have code that activates for a specific device. So, saying that, we are going to focus on AWD, Adaptive Web Design, for our project. Because we want it to be uh, the most targeted method. We want it to be focused on how does our project look best for an iPhone and how does it look best for an Android phone. And we're not going to need to rewrite all of our code, of course. When we get to the part of Cordova, we have these very cool concepts of merges, 
which is that specific code will merge to the larger code base per platform. And at the moment it doesn't make sense, but it will. Uh, and the short answer is that that's what we've got here. We would have a desktop version of our project separated in its own folder that focuses on that, and a mobile friendly in its own project. But since ultimately our project is going to focus on mobile devices, we're not really going to spend time on this. We're just going to set up the basic concept. But we're going to focus on the mobile version, and then eventually that will be compiled to all the devices. So that's a little bit behind the scenes of what's going on. Once we have these basic concepts down, then we'll get back into coding and such. But any questions at this point? Okay, so I'll put these notes in the folder a little bit later. We'll get back to coding. <laughs>